Welcome to PatsCast. I'm Brad Whitaker. An interesting trade rumor is starting to break about the Minnesota Vikings potentially shipping off star wide receiver Justin Jefferson to the New England Patriots. Now, I should note this rumor is entirely hypothetical. It was floated out by Colin Coward, so take it with a grain of salt. But it makes a lot of sense, both from the Vikings' perspective and from the Patriots' perspective. So let me get into it a little bit, starting with the Patriots. Obviously, what the Pats have been missing for, I wouldn't just say the last four seasons without Tom Brady. I would say since Randy Moss departed the organization, they have been missing a true number one receiver. It's amazing they were able to win three Super Bowls. Yes, I know they had Gronk, they had Edelman, they had a lot of great parts, uh, you know, Danny Amendola, uh, Brandon Mitchell was amazing for a season that he played. They, they, they really milked a lot out of these players, and Gronk's the greatest tight end ever, yes. But they, they never did it with that number one guy, and that's something you really need in today's NFL. We see the best teams end up usually have that top number one receiver. Um, the Chiefs, I guess, are an exception, but they also have the best quarterback in the league. But this rumor is what would happen is the Minnesota Vikings, they currently have the 11th overall draft pick, while the Patriots sit at third overall. For this to happen, the Vikings would want to move on from Kirk Cousins. So, Potentially, he's a free agent this year. They have expressed interest in bringing back Cousins, but he could go somewhere else. We'll see. But maybe they don't want to pay an expensive veteran quarterback who's 37, 38 years old. Instead, they want to get one of the young studs early in the first round. So what you do is you trade the 11th overall pick for the number three pick, and then you can have your choice or or whoever falls to number three of Jaden Daniels or Drake May. Patriots would receive Justin Jefferson, the 11th overall pick, and a first-rounder for the Vikings in 2025. Now, I think the the third option there is iffy. Maybe you get the Vikings' second-rounder this year. Um, I'm not sure they would trade another first-rounder. But that would give the Vikings the ability to take the quarterback of the future. They already have a lot of weapons. Uh, Jordan Addison really had a great year this year coming out of USC. TJ Hawkinson one of the better tight ends in the NFL, and you have a young quarterback to build around who has an offense that he can um, work with right away and be one of the better quarterbacks, um, or at least one of the better rookies heading into the season with all the pieces around him. And then the Patriots, yes, they would still have to figure out the quarterback position, sure. But you got the 11th overall pick if you wanted to use that on a Bo Nix. If people have him jumping up into the teens, or a Michael Penix. Some people think Penix is better than Nix. Or maybe you wait for the second round and take a J.J. McCarthy. Or you go to free agency or you draft Spencer Rattler, someone in the third round. There's a lot of different things you could do. But the thing about the Patriots is they are in a rebuild right now. And yes, maybe there is a chance they have an elite defense. If they nailed free agency and fill most of their needs there, they can focus on a few positions in the draft and have a good offense again, and suddenly be a playoff team. That is a possibility. In all likelihood, the way these things work, when you bring in a young QB, it takes a few years for it to work. Whether it's Drake May or Jaden Daniels, they're probably not going to have the full pieces around them. Either they're not going to have great receivers, or they're not going to have great protection up front, and they're going to have to work with what they have, and it's going to be a three- or four-year project. That's usually how these things work. I hope it's quicker. They have the capability of making it quicker, but it really depends on if they can draw free agents to Foxborough, which is iffy because Belichick's no longer there. I know Mayo's a friendly guy, but the demand to play for the Patriots obviously is not what it once was when Tom Brady was here. But I think the question people are asking is, why the hell would the Minnesota Vikings do this, right? Like, why, why would they give up arguably the best receiver in the NFL just so they can go and get a young quarterback? Well, One, they wouldn't want to pay Kirk Cousins, and they want to trim some salary and have more room in the salary cap and ability to navigate in free agency. And number two, Justin Jefferson is heading into the final year of his contract. So if the Patriots were to make this move, they would do it with the intention of signing Jefferson to an extension, perhaps the most lucrative contract in wide receiver history. That sounds very unpatriot-like, but things are different these days. 
and we know how hard it is to get that number one receiver. You lock it down. You don't have to worry about it. You bring back Kendrick Bourne. You have Demario Douglas. Maybe you franchise tag Hunter Henry. Boom, you got one of the better receiving cores in the league just like that. It would be really a really great move. And then you have some time to figure out the quarterback position. Maybe you roll it back with Mac Jones again or Bailey Zappi. I know people don't love that idea, but Mac with an off season, he, Mac's a hard worker, right? Like he, he he's going to put in the effort and try to fix his mistakes. Really, his mistakes, other than his weak arm, is all mental. So if he can fix those mental mistakes, he's built up a lot of calluses over these last couple seasons. Maybe you run it back with Mac again, or you go after Baker Mayfield. Maybe you take a shot at Kirk Cousins. Although if you take Cousins and you extend Justin Jefferson then you're in the same salary cap situation as the Vikings are in. So that's probably not what will happen. That said, the Patriots have some of the most cap space in the league. Assuming they cut J.C. Jackson, you know, if they're willing to give up an Adrian Phillips or some of these other guys as well, you're looking at almost $100 million in cap space. But giving up, uh, giving up J.C. Jackson puts you somewhere in the 80s. And you still bring back J.C. Jackson if you want. You just have to restructure his deal. But he's not going to get that money because he's not the top cornerback that people thought he once was. Um, I really like this idea. And uh, Colin Coward's the one who floated it out. Michael Felger gave it his full endorsement. I take everything Felger says with a grain of salt, although he is very entertaining. Uh, had a great discussion discussion argument with Michael Lombardi yesterday. I encourage you checking that out about how Belichick shouldn't have left or why Belichick left. That was really interesting. But Felger was the one who really endorsed this after Colin Coward floated it out. And now it's out in the ether, right? And the Vikings really have a hard decision to make because you extend Justin Jefferson, you extend Kirk Cousins, and now you're in salary cap hell for quite some time. The Patriots have a lot of flexibility and room to spend on a guy like Justin Jefferson and lock down that number one guy for years to come. Look, I'm a guy, if they're not interested in getting Jane Daniels or Drake May, they're not sold on it, I'm very much in the camp of the Patriots drafting Marvin Harrison Jr. And maybe Marvin Harrison Jr. will be the number one wide receiver in the NFL. I think he will be top 10 right away. But you bring in Justin Jefferson, you literally have the number one wide receiver in the NFL right away. Maybe Chase is better, maybe Diggs, but I don't think so. I think Justin Jefferson is the guy, at least in fantasy football, he seemed to be the number one pick in most drafts. Um, so, look, we'll, we'll see what the Patriots decide to do if they have an opportunity like this. Uh, this, is the, this is the era in the NFL where you have to spend on wide receivers. You can no longer go cheap at that position. Even the Kansas City Chiefs, who gave up Tyreek Hill, they're spending all their draft capital on wide receivers every year. And Patrick Mahomes, it's, it's not like he's working with nothing out there. He has a lot of B, B to B plus pieces out there. His receiving core works, and you still have Travis Kelsey. That's why they're in the Super Bowl, not to mention Mahomes is the greatest quarterback in the league right now. But I think there's a lot, a lot, of, a lot of ways you can slice it here. If you brought in a Justin Jefferson, then you have the 11th overall pick. You spend it. I don't think you spend it on a quarterback personally. Ideally, you get a QB in free agency and then don't have to worry about it. And then you get probably the third or fourth best tackle in the draft, which the Patriots really need. You bring back Michael Owenu. Maybe you draft another tackle in the second round. You spend your first two picks on tackles and you kick back Owenu to right guard. And suddenly you have a, 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 a first round tackle at, at, on the left side. Cole Strange, who's good when healthy. David Andrews, we all know he's a great center. Michael Owen, who are at right guard, and then a second round tackle at right tackle, or you 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 flip them or whatever. Or maybe City So comes back and really takes a leap in year two. He he was really building something at the end of year one. I think suddenly, whomever the quarterback is, even if it is Mac Jones, you suddenly have the protection in front of you to have the time to throw the football go through the progression. And look, you're bringing in a guy like Alex Van Pelt who's going to run a much more simplified West Coast offense. If it's Mac Jones, I think he could actually thrive in that type of system. And yeah, especially when you have Justin Jefferson to throw to and you have better protection out there. And Demario Douglas, we know he's the slot receiver guy of the future there. Bourne, Henry, if they come back, bam. Like that's a decent offense. And then you maybe develop another quarterback um, use Mac or Baker or Jacoby Brissett or one of those guys as a bridge for a couple of years. Mac has, has one more year in his contract, but 
you could also put Bailey out there. I mean, Bailey showed signs of life there at the end of the season, obviously had some good games and had some not so good games. So I think, I don't know about Bailey's happy. It's kind of hard to tell at this point, but I think a Mac Jones with confidence behind a decent O line and an actual receiving core at least is a bridge to maybe the next quarterback, or maybe he plays lights out better than his rookie year in year four with a new offensive coordinator, some actual weapons and a good front. And there you go. Like you, you got something there and you bring him back for cheap. Maybe. I don't know. There's a lot of options here, but I really like this idea. It really just depends on what the Vikings want to do, how they want to handle their salary cap situation. If they intend on extending Justin Jefferson to a much longer contract, um, which would probably be the most expensive in NFL history. The Patriots have a lot more flexibility to do something like that. So it'll be interesting to see. Let me know what you think the Patriots should do. There's a lot of different things. Do you think they should hold on to number three? Do you think they should go after Jefferson if they can? Do you think they should spend that on a quarterback at number three or, or take Marvin Harrison Jr.? Or they make this trade. What do you do with the 11th pick? Do you draft a tackle? Do you draft another receiver? Maybe... Maybe Malik Neighbors falls to number 11, or, or Roma Dunze falls to number 11, who seems to be moving way up the draft boards. Maybe you got two receivers that you can bring in, and suddenly you're all set with that receiving core. We know they're bringing back a great defense. Like I said, this is probably a four-year rebuild, right, if you draft a quarterback at third overall. But you make a move like this, and you fill out all the other pieces, and then you make it easy for whomever's that quarterback, whether it's Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi, or one of these free agents, there's a lot you could do. Jacoby Brissett, again, is another really solid option as a bridge guy. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and we'll be back with Pat's cast tomorrow.